Hi everybody, this is Lee. And with this video, I'm talking about Michael Moore and his calls to disrupt the inauguration of Donald J. Trump in January. Um, it's taken me a while to address this. Uh, apparently, the call went out last Wednesday. Um, and then there's an article at Common Dreams discussing that call. And I've been trying to get my head around why I don't like this or what's bothering me about it and I it took me a while and I think I figured it out uh, but I'll go through the article and then maybe you'll make your own decision of why you support Michael Moore's call and maybe why you do not or maybe you don't <laughs> have any feeling about it whatsoever but I'm going to go through it um, first, I'm going to say that uh, Michael Moore was a tremendous supporter of Ralph Nader uh, during his run for president in 2000 until um, the election grew closer and it appears that Al Gore, his campaign was running neck and neck with George Bush. And then uh, Michael Moore turned his back on um, Ralph Nader and joined the Al Gore team in order to promote Al Gore. And then uh, Michael Moore kind of trashed um, Ralph Nader. And I've never really felt confident about Michael Moore ever since then. And um, maybe that's what's coloring my view of what this call is supposed to mean. It looks like a repeat of history. <laughs> and so 16 years later, you know, 16 years wiser, um, it, you know, I look at it and it's just kind of a, red flags are going off about this. So the article is at Common Dream, Silence Not an Option, Calls Grow to Disrupt Trump Inauguration. This is from December 8th. And according to Michael Moore, the majority have spoken by nearly 2.7 million votes and counting. Silence is not an option. He tweeted that and then he added links to his group's website. And they have a hashtag, it's DisruptJ20. And I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to that website where he has this call up and a link to this article. So, um, Michael Moore is making a call to action for people to show up. And um, I was trying to look for the justification or the clarity for understanding of precisely what the the protest is supposed to be about um it looks like to me it's just a protest against Donald Trump in general and that's the confusing part for me because um okay I'll look at the wording it says this is a call on all good people or a call a, a call on all people of good conscience to join in disrupting the ceremony if Trump is to be inaugurated at all, let it happen behind closed doors. And showing the true face of the security state, Trump will preside over. And already, it's confusing me, even with that. Um, it looks like he's saying that if Trump is to be inaugurated, he should not be allowed to enjoy it. Um, he should have to go inside. Uh, because apparently people are going to be yelling and screaming and showing discontent. And so Donald Trump will have to be inaugurated inside. But the thing is, he is still going to be inaugurated. So what have you accomplished? You've made him go inside and then what? He gets inaugurated. What have you accomplished? Um, I don't see the point. Um, and so then this goes on to say, showing the true face of the security state, Donald Trump will preside over. And the thing is, we already are in a security state. We have been um, since back in the day, um, since 911. We've had several um, security uh, 
tightening um, here in the United States. We've had the Patriot Act. We've had the renewal of the Patriot Act. We've had surveillance by NSA and whoever else is surveilling us. Um, you know, phone calls, emails, faxes, um, text messaging, all surveilled. And so we are already in a security state. So why is this something new and different to protest with Donald Trump when it's already existing underneath Barack Obama and it started under George W. Bush? We've been in a security state. It didn't just start with um, Donald Trump. Okay, and so it goes on to say it must be made clear to the whole world that the vast majority of people in the United States do not support his presidency or consent to his rule. And um, the thing is, the whole world knows about our electoral college. Um, the whole world is probably more abreast of our public policy and public affairs than some of us here at home. They watched us elect presidents at least 44, 45, I forget what number we're on, times. Um, they know how we elect our president, um, the primaries, the state voting, the electors, the electoral college, things like that. And we've used the electoral college over the national popular vote at least five times to democratically uh, constitutionally elect the president um, to legally elect our president. This is our constitution. It is the law of our land to use the electoral college, um, not the national popular vote. Um, so the whole world already knows that. So what are we showing them? Um, our results have been reported. I don't get it. Um, so I'm going on and it says that Trump stands for tyranny, greed, and misogyny. And the thing is, that's also not new. <laughs> that's been here for a while. It didn't start with Trump. It may not end with Trump. Um, maybe Trump should be reprimanded, sure. Um, but, you know, it was here when Bill, Bill Clinton was here. Tyranny, greed, and misogyny. Uh, you can even look in our Congress. Um, to see what the representation of our Congress is um, in terms of misogyny, even under Barack Obama's administration. Uh, women make up more than 50% of the voting electorate, uh, yet and still we do not have 50% of the seats in Congress, um, not the House, not the Senate. It's not even close. So there you go. Um, it didn't start with Trump. Trump likely benefited from it. Uh, maybe he um, represents uh, what it is, but it's not new. It's been here. Our nation um, has been founded on tyranny, greed, and misogyny. Um, so we can focus on Donald Trump, but it didn't start with him. It didn't. It won't end with him. Um, it's likely kind of permeating our, our society as a whole. So um, I just don't understand the focus on Trump. Um, he is the champion of neo-Nazis and white nationalists. And I do believe that these groups did endorse or pledge allegiance <laughs> to Donald Trump. And maybe they responded to the dog whistles or they saw something in Trump that they felt represented them um, or something. Um, I do know that there were groups like this that also endorsed Hillary Clinton. And I do believe that they donated money to her campaign. Um, and the fact that Hillary Clinton uh, was a Goldwater girl does not speak well for her as well. And she expressed pride and being a Goldwater girl. She said, I was proud of being a, Bo a Goldwater girl. Um, Barry Goldwater was a segregationist, and that is how Hillary Clinton started out her political career. So, you know, again, I'm just 
trying to work up some outrage and I'm looking at the alternative and I'm saying, oh, well, <laughs> but OK, let's go on. Um, he is a champion of neo-Nazis and white nationalists of the police who kill the black, brown, and poor on a daily basis. And again, we already have that. It's already been happening ever since Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton lobbied for, as co-presidents, two for the price of one, they lobbied for the 1994 crime bill and then enacted and signed into law the 1994 crime bill. And then it was open season. It normalized the extra judicial killings of black, brown, and poor people on the street. Uh, and we have not had much redress in terms of prosecutions of officers who go wild in the streets um, since this behavior has been normalized and not punished. And so you say, you know, I'm looking at this of the police who kill, and that's been happening underneath Barack Obama's administration. It happened underneath George Bush. It happened under Bill Clinton, who also uh, presided over the execution of a poor black man who was mentally deficient and really didn't even know why he was there and the fact that he was going to be put to death. Bill Clinton actually presided over his execution in order to prove himself to be the champion of neo-Nazis and white nationalists who at that time had doubts about him. And so this also goes on to talk about racist border agents and sadistic prison guards. Again, 1994 crime bill. Also, um, deportations and the treatment of immigrants and refugees, people who come here um, through illegal manners and how they're treated once they get here. Uh, the constant regime changes in other countries like Honduras cause uh, women and children to flee into our countries for um, safety. And they were either deported by, back to um, a, a military police state uh, for persecution by Hillary Clinton's State Department, or they were imprisoned by the private prison industry under Barack, uh, Barack Obama's administration. And at the time, Hillary Clinton was still getting checks from the prison lobby. So again, what is the protest about, really? Um, there have been more deportations under um, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton than any previous president. The private prison industry has held more illegal immigrants and refugees under Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton than any other president. So why are you trying to get people to protest Donald Trump for something that's already being done under previous administrations? It makes not a lot of sense. And so it goes on to talk about the FBI and the National Security Agency who tap your phone and read your email. Since uh, W, uh, since the Patriot Act, since 911, that has been an ongoing policy of surveillance of inquiry into privacy, um, it it really started on a obscene level, I'll say, underneath George W. Bush. It continued and then expanded under Barack Obama's administration. In fact, um, people who tried to blow the whistle and tell us about the surveillance and the level um, and the extent of the surveillance have either been banished from our country at the threat of imprisonment, or they have been in prison and they are being tortured. Um, so, you know, again, all this is being put on Donald Trump, but it already exists and it's been existing under previous administration. And so, you know, I'm trying to understand the justification, the purpose of this uh, disruption. And it just seems kind of not really sounding right. Um, you can look at this article for yourself. Um, I'll post a link in the description. I'll post a link to the website of the organizers of this disruption. 
but it just seems kind of hypocritical. Um, there are things to protest. Um, I would say more on a state level than a federal level. Definitely fracking. Uh, we can protest that. That makes sense. Uh, we can protest pipelines, um, such as North Dakota's pipeline, um, the treatment of our indigenous population. We can protest that. These make sense. We can protest Flint, Michigan, uh, Michael Moore's hometown, I believe. Uh, and the fact that there still is not clean water available on a citywide level in Flint, Michigan, uh, we can protest that. We can protest um, uh, for getting rid of the voting machines. Uh, we can protest for um, hand counting of paper ballots plus exit polling, voter reforms, getting rid of the cross check. These are concrete things to protest. Uh, we can protest for... Uh, uh, public options with health care, uh, health care for all, uh, higher education for all. We can protest against the private prison industry. That makes sense. Um, there are many things to protest. Um, protesting Trump for some things that just don't seem to ring right, really, um, to me. The fact that Michael Moore is accusing him of doing things that he hasn't done, um, that Michael Moore anticipates Donald Trump will do. It, it makes not much sense to me, but people can make up their own minds, and I'm just going to leave these links, and um, people can decide what they want to do and how they want to spend their time. You know, if they want to start the GoFundMe accounts and raise a lot of money, save the paychecks, travel across country, yell at Donald Trump, and then go home while he's being inaugurated. Um, I, you know, everyone's got to make up their own minds. Good luck.